You are watching WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. All today's news with Mike Walcher, Debbie Ely, Dr. Walt Lyons has weather, Tom Hanneman has sports. And now, this is the Weekend Report. Good afternoon, everyone. Day three of the search for a six-year-old missing Bethel girl has come and gone. And Nicole Mao is still missing. Police believe she is a kidnapped victim and hold an East Bethel man in custody. Nicole disappeared early Friday. More than 100 people spent Friday night and Saturday searching a cornfield near where the suspect was arrested on Friday. Few clues were found. So today, as Trish Van Pilsen reports, authorities started over in a new location. They were along here, Captain? Uh, they didn't walk that far. Get, get in there. These are all your footprints down there? Yep. Authorities figured the suspect would have had easy access to this creek between the time he allegedly snatched Nicole and the time he was arrested. You get together with Sergeant Campbell and look at that, look at that goddamn map and I'll tell me, so we, let's go on the bar system on the map. It took sheriff's deputies more than six hours to plod through just a few miles of water and mud. Searchers realize there is a very good chance the little girl is nowhere near here. It's just with no solid information, this place seems as good as any. It's just a tough call. You just do what you can until we get better intelligence and where the girl might be. Searchers also checked scattered spots where people reported seeing suspicious cars or tracks, but with no luck. Relatives and friends of the Mao family did no better in their own search of the wooded area near Mao's home. <sighs> I keep praying that God's going to help us find her, and I'm sure he will. We're, we're going to find her. She's coming home. While the grown-ups searched and waited, the neighborhood children played in the backyard. They have been nervous and frightened since the kidnapping, especially Nicole's seven-year-old brother, Brandon. Then Nikki's gone, and I thought maybe he was going to come out of um, jail and try to bust the bars and get out of jail and come back and get, a, get one of us kids. Unless the suspect is charged by noon tomorrow, he'll have to be released from jail. Authorities hope that even without a statement from him, or without any trace of Nicole Mao, they'll have enough circumstantial evidence to charge him. Trish Van Pilsom, WCCO Television News, Anoka County. The search has been called off for the night, and authorities are not sure what they will do next. If you have any information about Nicole's disappearance, please call the Anoka County Sheriff's Department at 427-1212, 427-1212. At least five people were arrested and one injured last night in a series of fights that broke out in downtown Minneapolis. It happened outside the First Avenue nightclub when some teenagers started fighting. Several hundred people gathered around to watch the fisticuffs. Several police squads had to be called in to break it up. The fight began after a party sponsored by Seville Productions and First Avenue. Authorities say the gun, wielded by a man who was shot by police Friday night, was not loaded. 25-year-old Mark Richards was killed when he refused to drop the pellet gun he was pointing at a youth. Today, neighbors say there's no way the police could have known the gun was not loaded. The two officers who shot Richards are on three-day paid leaves of absence. An internal police investigation also is underway. Local pilots today began to assess the impact of an FAA plan to make our skies safer. Pilots we spoke to say the proposals restricting small plane access to certain areas and mandating installation of collision avoidance equipment may be useful, but they recommend less costly alternatives. I think it all goes back to the basics of uh, following the regulations that are already in existence and then uh, constantly updating your training. You can do so much with instruments, but the, uh, the eyes, the, uh, the, uh, the head of the, of the pilot is still the most important part of flying. Pilots say the cost of installing the new equipment could approach the value of their airplanes. Vikings quarterback Tommy Kramer has completed his alcohol abuse treatment program and is expected at training camp tonight. At last night's preseason game, the Vikings released a statement from Kramer, uh, Kramer who says he's ready to lead a healthier and happier life after his July 24th arrest on a drunk driving charge. Kramer says he is very excited about the upcoming season and the challenges that lie ahead. He says he will comment no further in his visit to the Hazelton Foundation. He pleaded not guilty to the drunk driving charge. A hearing is scheduled for next month. 
At least they're coming home, the Twins, that is. Our baseball heroes lost again today on the road in Boston. It's lost number six in a row. Tony Parker has more now from the Sports Center. And, uh, Tony, we're still in first place, right? Yep. The Twins closed out their six-game road trip with six straight losses, losing today's finale in Boston 6-4. to four. They left town five games up in the American League West. If Oakland wins today, but they are trailing, then the Twins will be back home tomorrow to face Detroit, leading by just one game. Now, Steve Carlton had a 4-0 lead in the bottom of the fifth on three Twins homers, but here he loaded the bases, then served up a grand slam home run pitch to Don Baylor, and the Red Sox went ahead to stay 5-4. It was Baylor's 12th career home, a grand slam, his 16th homer of the season, and it sent Carlton to the showers with his 13th loss of the year. The Twins are now 24 and 41 on the road. They're back in the dome tomorrow night, and uh, where they're 42 and 19 for the season. The problem is, though, they'll have to play Detroit, and they are the hottest team in the league right now. We'll have more later on in the sports. All right, pitching's got to come through. Thank you very much, Tony. Well, stay with us as the weekend report continues. We'll meet a group of women who did more than spent this Sunday in the park. Oh, did that feel good. My God, I don't believe where I am. Here at Towsley Ford. And Towsley Subaru. Our hail damage sale continues. We sold hundreds of the over 800 cars and trucks damaged by hail. And still hundreds more to sell, new and used. Don't let this chance slip by. A little hail damage means a lot of money saved for you. Hail damage prices plus 1.9% financing. And factory cash back up to $1,500. Hail damage prices are clearly marked on everything at Towsley Ford. And Towsley Subaru White, White Bear, Bear Lake. Lake. The Sound Centers celebrate our 12th birthday with a new store in St. Paul and a gigantic Sony sale. You'll celebrate when you see this giant 27-inch remote control <laughs> Trinitron for just $5.99. Here's one of Sony's best feature-loaded 8mm camcorders. <laughs> a super deal at $9.99. The area's largest Sony selection is on sale, so finding the lowest price on a Sony is a piece of cake. Look at our circular in your newspaper. Join the celebration at any of the four Twin City Sound Centers. Here, Caleb, the biggest news round these parts is Pepperidge Farm's new American collection. Big, generous cookies simply bursting with lumpy, bumpy personality. Whopping chunks of rich chocolate and nuts are hidden beneath each lump and bump. My favorites are the Chesapeake and the Sausalito. Hey, <laughs> they've got more personality <laughs> than most folks we know. <laughs> I have to be the cleanest woman in the world. I take showers and baths. I will not have body odor. I hate the words, body odor. Yet I know how vulnerable a woman can be. It can happen and I would die. So I use Safeguard all the time. Safeguard deodorant soap has more antibacterial lather than regular soaps, so it helps protect me in a way regular soaps can't. It gives me peace of mind. The most obvious challenge next is the next challenge that's a step above the, the North Pole uh, in terms of it's five times longer and it's two miles higher. Minnesota explorer Will Steger talking about a trip to the South Pole a year ago on the heels of returning from his expedition to the North Pole. And now the plans for the Antarctic Challenge are firming up. The expedition won't be officially announced until November, but Steger will team up with a French adventurer and a Soviet scientist to lead the trans-Antarctic trip. Like last year's North Pole adventure, the explorers will use dog sleds and skis. They will follow a 5,000-mile route across the icy continent, one that has never been attempted before. It's estimated it'll take six months, and Will Steger plans to begin in late 1989. A small group of women, members of Woods Women, today had an expedition of their own. For some, this uh, day of adventure may have seemed like a scene from a scary movie. But for these women, it was a challenge begging to be met. Ava Thompson reports. For Marie Swanson, this is day number two at rock climbing. She became interested in the sport after vacationing in Switzerland this summer. Well, this was my way of testing what my limits were, 
in a very supportive environment, uh, working with women who would say, well, if you don't want to go anymore, you can come down now. <laughs> and uh, that was really important to me. If you step with your foot, oh, there you, yeah, the next like thing to that. do is to stand on your foot. Swanson joined about eight other women who are being taught how to climb rocks. A nonprofit group called Woods Women provides the instruction. Our goal is to provide outdoor trips and outdoor experiences for women and to help women learn outdoor skills and learn how comfortable it can be to be in the outdoors. And this is done by having fun and learning skills. Learning a skill like rock climbing requires a lot of flexibility and lower body strength. These women also say it can be a problem-solving sport because climbers often don't know where to place a foot or hand next. I got a loose rock here. I better not play with that, baby. There we go. The climber also receives a lot of support from the people on the ground. Yay! Yay! <laughs> it's that support that Swanson finds encouraging. She says the competition is against herself and not the other climbers. She says it's a situation that allows her to go at her own pace. It feels exciting, and you feel okay. strong and confident and, um, and scared, but um, that's all part of it. And it's, just, it's, it's really a lot of fun. Thanks. Feels great. With Bill Kruskop, Ava Thompson, WCCO Television News, Taylor's Falls. Woods Women, the group that sponsors today's outing, sponsors other trips for women throughout the year, like canoeing, backpacking, and skiing. Picnicking with politicians. They're doing just that right now at Worth Park in Minneapolis. Congressman Martin Sabo is hosting his first Sabo Super Sunday. The festival features a picnic meal, bluegrass music, games, face painting, and a healthy dose of politics. Sabo says he took the idea from St. Paul Congressman Bruce Vento, who has held a festival in St. Paul for years. Sabo says it's time someone did the same thing in Minneapolis. Well, Dr. Watt will tell us if the cool weather is going to last. And we'll see how things at the State Fair are shaping up for the big event in just a moment. Here at Minnesota's only five-star Ford dealer, Bob Carter Ford, we say, take your pick. Buy a new Escort or Taurus and pay an incredibly low monthly payment. $99 a month for this 87 Escort. $99 a month for the world's best-selling car. Or own a Taurus for as little as $189 a month. That's right, just $189 a month. Take your pick of the best year-end values here at Bob Carter Ford, seven minutes east of the airport at the new 494 in South Roberts in Invergrove Heights. Amber is a $1.99 jumbo breakfast. Two farm fresh eggs, two buttermilk pancakes, two country sausage links, and two strips of hardwood cured bacon, only $1.99. Ember's big taste, small check. Keeping this baby running is my passion. I get a lot of help from Big Wheel Rossi, and you know, right now they're having a grand opening sale. Save on AC Delco oil filters and AC Delco spark plugs during the grand opening sale. Also save on Amico Ultimate Oil, only $1.29 after rebate. And Amico LDO Oil, only 44 cents after rebate. For more great savings, pick up Big Wheel Rossi's flyer in last Sunday's paper. The folks who planned to serve up millions of Prado Pups, snow cones, and French fries were out in force today at the state fairgrounds. Dozens of concession workers painted, primped, and priced their wares at stands that will be offering fast food all over the fairgrounds. There were even a few stuffed bears lying in wait for a lucky fairgoer or two. As in years past, WCCO will broadcast the noon, 5, and 6 p.m. reports live from the State Fair. That begins on Thursday, so come on out and see us, and uh, let's hope the weather's pretty nice for at least the start of the fair. You bet. Love those pronto pups and those mini <laughs> donuts. Mmm. Hardly <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. I do, too, but we're usually too busy working to do the show to get out there. Uh, you asked if the cool is going to continue? The answer is yes. We don't see a return to some of that awful stickiness of earlier this summer. In fact, we're in a cool period, which is interesting because, if you remember, the 30-day outlook suggested this whole region was going to have above normal temperatures. Well, we still have until the middle of September to verify that forecast, but certainly not today. It is real cool, high pressure. A record-setting high pressure, really, up around 30.50 on the barometer. Very unusual 
for the month of August. That is dominating the weather through this region and bringing some very, very chilly temperatures. 30s, a lot of them from central Canada down as far as South Dakota last night. And uh, it was quite cool here. 42 at St. At Cloud, 39 at Aberdeen and Bismarck's, 37 at Grand Forks, 41 International Falls, 29 at Tower, the coldest spot in the 48 contiguous states, a record 43 down at Rochester. And if you look on the early morning satellite picture, this is the infrared picture which shows you heat. The ground is cold and light colored, and can you see the warm water of the big lakes? It was chilly up there. Probably the air was about 30 degrees colder than the water. Today, we have the reverse situation. The sunshine started coming through. The ground started to heat up, but not an awful lot. Got a few puffy afternoon cumulus clouds to decorate the sky, and that was about it. The precipitation is well to the south. Two to three inch rains down in Arkansas earlier, and it's going to take at least 24 hours before these showers get into any threatening range of us. I today didn't even make 70. 69 degrees so far looks like the high. The record, or the record is 97, so summer can still come back, I suppose. 48 last night. That was the low, only six short of the record low for this date, and obviously below normal. Sunrise, well, since that will be at 8.07. Tomorrow, there's going to be plenty of precipitation through the central part of the country, but most of it will stay south of us. But fingers of clouds will start overspreading the state during the afternoon, as we'll probably get set up for some showers moving in by Tuesday. So basically, partly cloudy tomorrow. The wind's from the southeast, but it's not going to be coming out of the the deep south, it's just going to be the same cool air going around this high pressure system, so we don't expect any real warm up of consequence. Beautiful lily there basking in the sunshine. A little chilly to do it though at times today, mostly sunny at the moment. 67 the temperature, dew point 40, very dry. 37% the humidity, the wind's northwest at 17 and the barometer. Look at that, 30.39, but it is starting to fall now. Tonight, clear and very cool. 43 will be the low. The record low is 41 tomorrow. Might get close to it. Then for Monday itself, fair but increasing clouds for the afternoon. The high only around 71 degrees. Wind swinging into the southeast. Then a Monday night, mostly cloudy, warmer, 56 for a low. Then Tuesday, mostly cloudy with periods of showers at times, only 72 degrees. Then for the rest of the week, no big heat wave returning temperatures generally. The 70s, lows in the 50s. And uh, I guess that's better than 95 degree heat to go to the state fair. If you had me worried, I thought we might be getting a killing frost one of these evenings. Well, it was a killing frost in Tower last night, but I think we got about at least a month here in the cities. All righty. More than 100 Minnesotans went to bat for Nicaragua today. 16 area softball teams competed in the fourth annual Nicaragua tournament at Armitage Park in Minneapolis. The tournament is part of a local effort to raise funds for humanitarian relief in Nicaragua. Event organizers say they chose baseball because Nicaraguans and Americans share a love for the sport. Last year's tournament raised more than $1,000. And on the subject of baseball, zero and six. That's what the Twins are coming back with. I'm That's right. the twin streak. If you're a Milwaukee fan, you can always go with Molitor, right? Right. He's on a 38-game streak. And yeah, we'll do some streaking here to show you what we're going to have coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Car buyers, you wished, you waited, you won. At Wilkins Dodge City, $39 down buys any new car, truck, or van. You heard correctly. At Wilkins, $39 down buys new front-wheel drive Colts from $131 per month. 40 new Shadows from $167 per month. Mid-sized Dakota pickups, $154 per month. Or luxurious Lancers from $198 per month. Financing, rebates, discounts, $39 down. Real deals from Wilkins Dodge City, University and Lexington, St. Paul. Pacific Pool and Patio is having its gigantic summer pool sale. Swim now, pay later. No payments until spring of 1988. Today's pool prices at a low 9.9 .9 simple interest financing rate. Call today for a free yard evaluation. Pacific Pool and Patio. We're not best because we're biggest. We're biggest because we're best. Brooklyn Center, Burnsville, Minnetonka, or North St. Paul. Call any one of our four easy locations today. Amber is a $1.99 jumbo breakfast, two farm fresh eggs, two buttermilk pancakes, two country sausage links, and two strips of hardwood cured bacon, only $1.99. Ember's big taste, small check. Terrified, on the run, they have no place to hide in the United States. 
They are illegals who say if they return to their own country, they will be tortured and killed. Monday on Newsday, you will spend a tension-filled 36 hours with a family of Guatemalan refugees whose hope lies in Canada and with the Overground Railroad. A Minnesota man risks his own freedom to help get them to the border. It's a compelling story, one you won't want to miss Monday at 4.30 on Newsday. In that final game in Boston today, Boston 6, the Twins 4. The Twins started out like they might end that road jinx, but the wheels came off for lefty Steve Carlton and a grand slam home run ended the twi hand of the Twins. Their sixth loss in six games away from home. Now, thankfully, they're back home tomorrow night, still have a slim lead in the American League West. Gary Gaetti got things rolling no today, hitting his 27th Andrew homer of the year Sellers. off Jeff Sellers in the top of the second. Roy Smalley followed with his eighth, and it was two zip. Then Kent Herbeck, his 31st home run with one on in the third, and Carlton had a 4 nothing lead. But the wheels started to come loose for Lefty in the bottom of the fourth when he loaded the bases. Uh, the Sox failed to score when Spike Owen hit into an ending-ending double play, but it only delayed the inevitable that occurred in the next inning. A bunt, a balk, a hit, run-scoring walk, and here it is, a grand slam home run by Don Baylor for the game-winning hit. It made the score 5-4 to four and made Dwight Evans a solo homer, which followed... Off reliever one, Beringer, meaningless. Now, After their three homers, the Twins' bat cooled, and Jeff Sellers struck out 11 batters on his way to his fifth win of the season. The 11 Ks, a career high for Sellers. Sellers pulled a muscle in his hip and needed relief help in the eighth. Wes Gardner came on to record his sixth save of the year. Well, while Twins fans hope to see a six-game losing streak halted, Milwaukee Brewers fans keep cheering for Paul Molitor, uh, Molitor's hitting streak. Monitor extended that to 38 this afternoon at County Stadium. This single in the fifth off Kansas City's Charlie Liebrandt kept it alive at 38. Monitor had more to celebrate than that hit. Bill Schroeder put one into the left center field gap. The double scored a pair of Brewers runs, and Milwaukee and Paul Monitor went on to defeat the Royals by the score of 12 to 5. Taking a look now at all the scores in the American League today, there's Milwaukee's win. And here's some good news. New York leading Oakland 2-0 in the seventh. California leads Toronto 4-2 in the seventh. Detroit 4-3 over Cleveland today. And Baltimore leads Seattle 3-1 in the seventh inning. Well, Pete Rose is trying to send a message to Whitey Herzog, telling him to lighten up on his reds. The only thing the Cardinals lit up was the scoreboard, though. Tommy Hare's opposite field line drive was fair enough to drive in a pair of runs. Lance Johnson was uh, just brought up by the Cardinals. And you can see here, while St. Louis likes his defensive skills, Johnson hauls this, this one right off the wall. The Cards sweep the Reds in Cincinnati with a 12-6 win. Here are the National League scores. San Francisco over Montreal. There's St. Louis's win over Cincinnati. Houston beat the Cubs today. Atlanta did the same to Pittsburgh. L.A. 5, Philadelphia 1. And the Mets beat San Diego 9-2. Well, the final score looks great on paper. Vikings 37, the Colts 13. But last night in the Metrodome, head coach Jerry Burns wasn't happy about his team's performance. A thought that was echoed by Keith Millard. As a good defense as I think we are, we, we made too many mistakes. We weren't tackling. Our tackling was bad. And, you know, you got to be able to tackle it, you know, to bring these backs down. But I thought our assignments were good. I thought we were aggressive. But uh, I think we, we need to iron a lot of things out. And that's what preseason's for. Well, at least the bounces went the Vikings' way indeed. Uh, the most spectacular bounce was a bounce that went right to Buster Ryan. What happened was we threw it up, and Hassan jumped, and the defensive back hit him. And it bounced off of both of them, and I happened to be coming by. And by some instinct, I just stuck my hand out and pulled it in, and I ran in the end. I still think the magic's there and stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I felt good about it. Um, you know, I, I just wish the kickoff returns would have went a little better. But, uh, you know, sometimes you want things to just, bam, happen all of a sudden, but they kind of gradually happen. Burns was so unhappy as he kept Wade Wilson and the first team into the game late into the third quarter for a touchdown drive. Defense can have two or three guys make an outstanding play and do well. So we're still putting together and matching together, and it's, it's, it's coming. I mean, it's, it's not, um, I'm, you know, from their standpoint, everything should be right now, right now, right now. And, um, you know, that's what we would like to see also, but we're, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's coming. Next up for the Vikings is Saturday matinee at the Metrodome against New England. The game, which will be televised nationally by CBS and locally by CCO, will start at 2 o'clock. Well, some of the best three-year-old stakes horses went after the winner's share of the $150,000 Canterbury Cup today. Here's the stretch run in that mile and one-eighth race, and it was an unusual one because the winner ate the winner. Disqualified, Mom's Ferrari. 
with Daryl Montoya in the stirrups looked like the winner, but afterwards they disqualified Mom's Ferrari, a locally owned horse, and declared the favorite, the free race favorite, Bolshoi Boy, the winner, and uh, Joel ran third uh, before they had the disqualifications. So we do have the official winner, Bolshoi Boy, Joel's second, Mom's Ferrari, led all the way, but did not get the win. All right, very good. Thank you, Tony. That will do it for the weekend report. We hope you'll join us again at 10. We say goodbye with a look at uh, some of the highlights from this weekend's water ski tournament at Lake Phelan at St. Paul. Have a good evening. Here comes Mike Taylor to give him some support. A Channel 4 editorial replied, we favor a plan to develop in its entirety a park of nearly 300 acres on the shores of Lake Minnetonka. With an opposing view, State Senator Jen Olson. The vision that preserved the shores of the Minneapolis chain of lakes for public enjoyment was used as justification for supporting Hennepin Park's proposal for a 292-acre regional park on Lake Minnetonka in the city of Minnetrista. What was not said is that the boating public has almost no use of the Minneapolis lakes. The result has been increasing pressure on Lake Minnetonka. People come to Lake Minnetonka to get on the lake. That's where the magic is, not in acres of parkland from which Lake Minnetonka cannot even be seen. Hennepin Parks claims their plan is needed to serve 600,000 uses, the equivalent of 15% of the entire state population each year. The cost of the taxpayers is likely to be over $20 million to acquire and develop that land. The $6 million approved by the legislature is only the beginning. An alternative plan for a park of approximately 175 acres in the same area has a potential of one half of the land being donated, with an additional donation of land to make parking available for a public boat access in the city of Mound, where there is now no secured parking. None of these land gifts are available under the current plan. I believe a plan which achieves the goals for increased boat access to Lake Minnetonka provides a beautiful 175-acre park area for non-boaters' enjoyment as well and joins the currently underutilized 3,700-acre Carver Park Reserve with its many lakes, marshes, woods, and open land is not only visionary but prudent as its price tag is half of what the current plan will cost the taxpayers. I hope you agree and will make your views known on this issue. An equal time reply. Did you know the last time you starved yourself to lose fat, you might have lost muscle? Why? You didn't eat enough protein. Protein helps you keep the muscle while you lose fat. And that's what's special about Kellogg's Special K. It has the highest level of dietary protein of any cereal. So the under 200 calorie Special K breakfast may help you get the fat off and keep the muscle on. Special K. Keep the muscle, lose the fat. Sunshine comes in a brand new form. Introducing Minute Maid Squeeze Fresh. We are the taste that starts your day, Minute Maid. So don't squeeze this, squeeze this. It's 100% pure orange juice concentrate you make fresh by the glass. Potato chip, the taste so fresh. You know some say they're just the best. That old Dutch taste keeps them coming back to potato chips in the windmill pack. That old Dutch taste keeps you coming back to potato chips in the windmill pack.